It's just entertainment purpose. It's not. It's just entertainment purpose. It's not. In the case of anybody. It's just entertainment purpose. It's not. Hi, hotties, kettles, teasters. You here for hot tea? All commentary is alleged. In my opinion, this is for entertainment purposes only. Letitia sat down with Carlos King, y'all, for this boring interview that was so hard to get through and once i started to watch it you guys leticia is an absolutely scary person so the only reason that i'm breaking this down is because leticia needs to be examined seriously and y'all probably think that i'm being funny or exaggerating leticia needs help in real life. So Carlos is trying to push this narrative that Leticia was this boss woman the whole time she came on the screen as a um stay-at-home mom and now all of a sudden she got her blueprint which she never had a blueprint before. Leticia also in this interview said like you know she just know herself but I don't think she do at all. Like, let's be honest. What do we really know about Letitia and Marceau? Also, something that I noticed that was really interesting, Carlos asked her, has she ever said thank you to Mill? She said she said thank you to Mill once before, like when the first when the show first started. Like she said thank you to Mill and Martel. And then this fucking, oh, I'm sorry. This girl turns around and said, but you know, realistically, they should be, they should be um, thinking us as well like a pot uh, thank yous need to be going all around so she alludes to male needing to um say thank you to her because she asked the scots to be on board with the show and they wouldn't have a show if the scots wouldn't be on board with the show and y'all the first episode of season six nobody noticed that they were gone and i can guarantee you majority of the people that watch their show skip past their scenes on the last episode she then proceeds to say she would thank someone for helping her but she's not gonna thank them all the time like she let that be known right but y'all know i'm pretty observant so as i continued to watch the interview carlos was like oh i say thank you all the time it's no big deal with saying thank you to somebody that helped you or took you from one place to another so then i thought that he was doing that to shade melody to say like oh like it's no it's nothing wrong with Melody saying thank you to the Scots. But then he says in that in the same breath that Letitia says thank you to him all the time. So this is what I mean by envy and jealousy. Why is it that you feel like Melody needs to say thank you to you because her husband asked y'all to be on a show when you can give Carlos all of these thanks and all of these praises when Melody is the one that pitched the show to him? So how is it that you can sit on this same interview and say, oh, I'm not going to apologize all the time or I'm not going to be, I'm only going to apologize one time, but Carlos in the same breath air you out and say, you apologize to him or I'm sorry not apologize I don't know why I keep saying apologize y'all I'm talking too fast but in this same breath Carlos says that you say thank you to him all the time so you all you sit here and you say oh I'm only gonna say thank you once so I'm not gonna be saying thank you all the time but you saying thank you all the time to the wrong person but this is what I mean like nobody can really get with Tisha because she can't be real with herself at the end of the day if somebody take me from one place to another or introduce me to something or turn me on to a lifestyle that I had no idea existed I'm going to be super like just just I don't know just the way that they treated Mill throughout this entire situation is just very telling especially considering Mill brought all of them on like Mill put everybody on period and speaking of Mill put everybody on this is the discussion that y'all we really have to have Letitia literally y'all and I'm gonna stop it when she do it Letitia it's like she studies male and like she has books and folders and lessons full of how to be male Letitia literally copied the same exact thing Mel said on her Carlos King interview. When I say Letitia said the exact same thing Mel said, she said the exact same thing Mel said. And I posted both clips in this video so y'all can compare and contrast because it's no way y'all are going to tell me that Letitia is not sitting down mimicking and studying Mel 
almost to the point in which this is scary. Stormy, Letitia, Arion, Martel, they are lifetime girl, y'all, please. It's scary to me. They are a lifetime movie that needs to be told. So Letitia basically says, Oh, I always like if you tell me that you want to do something, I'm the type of person that's going to be the one to connect you. I'm going to use my resources to connect you. Who the who did that sound like, y'all? And let's be honest, what resources do Letitia have? And let's be honest, what resources did she ever use to help anybody? Because apparently uh, from this interview, um, Kiki, her cousin, wanted to be a reality star her whole life. Sorry, my cat is sneezing. But Kiki, a reality star, she wanted to be a reality star her whole life. Letitia gets on the reality star and tells Kiki, oh, well, when I get on, then I'm going to put you on. Letitia had been on the show for how long before uh, Kiki got on? So Letitia is one of those people that don't want to see people do better than her, allegedly, and in my opinion. Because once you on a TV show, you own, so why not... You you know, put your people on. You want a TV show, put your people on. She wanted to get, push herself uh, far ahead in the reality game before she brought her people on, allegedly, and in my opinion, because her logic just didn't make any sense. She also said in this same interview that she didn't really get apologies or I'm sorry, she didn't really get thank yous from her family for her putting them on. And she feels some type of way about that. But in the same breath, don't really apologize. I mean, don't really say thank you to Melody. And I don't know why I keep saying apology, but at that same breath, don't really say thank you to Melody. But in the same breath, mad that your family don't say thank you to you. Like this girl is exhausting like I can see why her husband step out on her she exhausting I'm sorry and I don't see why I don't even like Mar Marceau like I I'm not really co-signing that I'm just being a a a-hole. So if y'all want to see this full interview, go head over to the Carlos King channel. I personally only got bits and pieces because it is excruciating hearing this girl talk. Also, I need Carlos King and Letitia to understand they keep throwing her business or her um, educational accolades out there. And that doesn't necessarily make her look good because what she portrays herself to be. She doesn't portray herself to be a smart woman. That's not a dig. That's not us hating. That's not me uh, projecting how I feel on myself onto myself because I'm, I'm brilliant. I'm a genius, right? But when I observe you because I am an independent thinker and people that are free independent thinkers have the ability to be able to observe people, not necessarily necessarily judge them or um, project onto them, but observe them because we're free, independent thinkers. And I just don't get smart, strong, educated woman from Letitia. That is not to say that I am projecting because in this same um, interview, she tried to like, I guess, shade the millimeters because she then said that, um, you know, the people that call her dumb and stupid are projecting. She also said that her fan base is called the T squad, which I already knew we made a video about it already. I knew she was trying to say that her fan base was the T squad. And I'm going to assume that she came up with this after they had this interview. And then that's when she posted that uh, picture on Instagram because these are pre-recorded interviews. Nonetheless, Letitia's fan base is T squad. And y'all, who have we ever heard say T squad? Ain't nobody ever say T-Squad. Nobody ever said T-Squad, in my opinion. The Melometer's been thinking of a name before Melody even uh, said the Melometer's, and that was just because we wanted to be that. But nonetheless, um, Tisha said that the T-Squad don't have time to sit on the computer all day and be in drama or create drama when her people have like businesses and like educational careers or something like that. And I think that is so funny because I don't feel like any smart, critical, thinking, educated woman would actually really like you. They might feel sorry for you because the millimeters allegedly be bullying you. 
And I don't think they be bullying you, but I think they just be calling you on your BS, but they might feel sorry for you. But when we say like just inspired by you or they just like you, nobody just likes Tisha and I don't care what nobody say. People feel sorry for Tisha because the way Marceau treat her, but as far as her having like her own standing like nobody looks at you and is just like inspired. Like I don't get resilience and and passion and free thinking and educational thinking and self thinking. Like Letitia is such a nasty spirited person. She's the type of person to see that somebody is doing wrong to you and not speak up. And those type of people I don't like. Period. It doesn't matter what I feel about you. If somebody is doing wrong onto you, then I'm going to speak up. For example, the Real Housewives of Potomac situation with Wendy. I don't like Wendy because of the how she treated Monique, but the way that the cast treated her last year was an absolutely disgusting thing to see. And I was willing to speak up about that. Letitia is the type of person, because she don't like you, she's not going to speak up and say anything. And we saw that with her and Mel. Because she didn't like Mel, she just wouldn't put herself in Mel's shoes. And I just can't resonate with that type of nasty jealousy. So in my opinion, majority of the T-Squad come from Bessemer County or Bessemer Hill. I don't know, but... T-Squad is full of Bessemer hillbillies. Tisha and Marceau also moved out of their house so they can, because they're getting it remodeled, thank God, because again, like their house is so trashy and ugly and disgusting. It should have been the first thing that they worked on, but whatever. So they're remodeling their house and they moved into an apartment. And why does Tisha still have the male puppet? She is so weird. She probably be in the bathroom practicing how to be male with the puppet. Like, she is so weird. Like, it's one thing to use it as a prop, but it's a whole other thing to keep the male prop. Like, that is some weird, psychopathetic-ish on top of that, she was like, oh, why you didn't like have me and my puppets for the 100th season? You know, that was a moment. Newsflash, Tisha, because I don't think they being honest with you over there. That shit was lame. That was lame. It was tragic. It was an epic fail. We was laughing at you. Like, I think you're so uncool. I think you're so uncool. And all the melameters roasting you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You about to get me turned up like Megan the style, yeah, cause stop, like no, Carlos be real with her, that shit was ass, that was whack, it was lame, it was weak, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't given what you thought it was gonna give other than reassuring us that you childish in the brain you insecure and you be at home stuck with them kids all day so tisha also said some other other stuff but this um was so excruciating to watch i was skipping through everything so what i have here is just a whole bunch of skip through mess it's, it, and also the very first thing that I'm going to show y'all is proof that she copied Mill's exact interview. She is so crazy. We need to really like get some money together or create a petition to have Carlos King also put Tisha in therapy. I don't know what's more disheartening. The fact that she actually thinks she's eating or the fact that these people lying to her because they trying to get under male skin. Or maybe they're not lying to her to get under male skin. Maybe they lying to her to, I guess, like push her into her confidence because you know what they say like live a delusional life and manifest the life that you want and you'll get it so maybe if she manifest um a more business woman business savvy boss fashion chick lifestyle then she would achieve that i don't know y'all so let's get into this video y'all don't forget to like subscribe comment hit that post notification bell so you are up to date when i upload and you can be up to date with all of the latest love and marriage huntsville drama you know carlos sometimes it comes to bite me in the butt but i'm always that person literally even from kiki and you know this <laughs> i'm always that person who literally when a person shares with me something they want to do or a vision or where they want to go i figure out i try to figure out how can i help you get there okay so what's you. you know what I'm saying? And that's just how I am. That's how, you can tell me right now that there was something you wanted to do. If I know a connect or possibly I'm gonna say, oh, let me connect y'all. Here's his number, here, you know, do y'all thing. Um, and that's just kind of that's how I move. That's how I move. When let me ask you this. 
when you saw Kiki in the main titles, what was your thought? I was happy for her. She wanted to be a part of this, like, from day one. I remember the first week we started filming this show. She wanted to bring something to the house to present to Brent. And I'm like, I don't even know these producers myself. I'm like, you know, give it some time. Once I get in, you're going you're gonna to come on. So, you know, for her to be where she's at right now, I'm happy for her. She wanted it. She got it. And this is what I mean about Tisha, and this is why I clock her. She wants to act like she's for the girls. She's about women empowerment. Did that sound like someone that was supportive of their cousin that wanted to be on a show? She's a nasty spirit. She didn't bring Kiki on, and I don't really believe she was going to bring Kiki on unless it was under her, not to give Kiki her own platform, which is what Mel did, but you're going to hear her try to take credit for that. Oh, I didn't know that, Tisha. Because it's probably not true. <laughs> Wait, so Kiki always wanted to be a part of Love and Marriage Huntsville, even before season one aired? Mm -hmm. So why did Mill put her on and not her cousin? But hold on, let me clear it up a little bit. She, because she may say this, it wasn't Love and Marriage Huntsville she wanted to be a part of. She always wanted to be on TV. So when she offered to bring a strip to my home to give to the producers, it was for a show that she wanted to do. So oh, Kiki always had aspirations to be on TV, but you never had aspirations to be on TV. Correct. That's okay. Right. And before she start lying, I want y'all to know that Kiki brought her a script to her house to give to the producers for a new show. And she never even relayed the strip or relayed the message. She never passed it along. But she wants to sit here in the next breath and say that she put her cousin on, y'all. She was filming. And what you said at the reunion was, and I remember this so distinctly, now it makes sense. When you found out Kiki was filming, you was like, all right, girl, this is what you want, so do it. Make sure you're good, and I wish you the best, right? She filmed with me first. I brought her on. We did two things together. One was for the Hey Brown Girl event, when I allowed her to come and be the speaker, because I know she wanted to be on TV. So I'm like, my thing is, ask friends, family members, whatever, even though her and I wasn't getting a really good space at that time, but this is your dream. So whatever I can do to help you out, I'm going to try and use my resources to do it. I'm just that type of person. So I allowed her, asked her to come on, you know, to speak on the Hey Brown Girl with me, because she wants to be, she, at that time, she wanted to be a speaker. And I told her, after I I feel like Carlos know this is a lie, but look at how she said the exact same thing Mill said. But if you are the type of person that would always put somebody on or put them into position, why didn't you do this for Kiki when you first got on the show? We It was introduced to Kiki in the fifth season, girl. And at the reunion, you said Mel brought Kiki on the show to tell your business. So which is it? Did you bring Kiki on the show or did Mel bring Kiki on the show to tell your business? she was on the show and the second time she was on the show with Mel at the Christmas day. I was like, well, girl, hey, I know you want to come on to be messy. We could have had a whole time. She would have been totally different. I'm always that person literally even from Kiki, and you know this. <laughs> I need y'all to understand, Carlos co-signed what Melody said, but never even knew about what Letitia had said. So what Melody said can be proven, and it is a fact. We don't know what Letitia said to be a fact, and we won't know until TT get on Carlos King's show and talk about it because Letitia is a liar. Letitia trying to say she put Kiki on, but I think Mel put Kiki on. Letitia just trying to say that she put Kiki on because she started to film with Kiki after she found out Kiki was going to start filming because you can look at her energy and her demeanor. It didn't look like she was happy for Kiki that she was on the show anyway. So I'm always that person who literally, when a person shares with me something they want to do or a vision or where they want to go. I figure out, I try to figure out how can I help you get there? Okay, so what's going on for you? You know what I'm saying? And that's just how I am. I'm going so hard because she has the track record to back it, whereas Letitia just said the same thing but don't have no track record to back that. My thing is, ask friends, family members, whatever, even though her and I wasn't getting a really good space at that time, but this is your dream. So whatever I can do to help you out, I'm going to try and use my resources to do it. I'm just that type of person. Whatever happened to those puppets that you had at the reunion? Where are they now? <laughs> oh, we moved. So they're in a box somewhere. We, like, you, you listen on the show. We moved to an apartment while we renovated our current home. So they're not with me. I should have had them. Look They're my girl. And listen, I was like, oh, so the puppets don't get a special on the 100th episode. Like, you already know that was the whole moment. Very thankful as well. Um, so look, my fan base is called the Raindrops. Mm -hmm. Melody's fan base is called the Melometers. So what is Tisha's fan base called? I don't know. You know, they've been DMing me and asking me and some of my fans like, hey, Tisha, do we need a name? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what T-Quad, I guess. We'll call, they're going to be called T-Quad. Uh.
Oh, the tea squad because y'all be also serving tea t-shirts. Now we keep it all the way real. My fans, like, they don't have time for the BS. They keep it all the way real. They're like, we ain't gonna sugarcoat. We ain't gonna be around the bush with these. These are the facts, and we gonna put it out there. Well, and we still have so ten business owners too, so you know we don't have a lot of time to be on social media starting this and serving tea. We're working moms, business owners, and wives, and we're happy in our life. Okay, just to be clear. We started the show and how you were very nervous. And you were like, what am I doing right now? And I said, Tisha, if you don't get this together, I'm going to give you a pink slip. So talk to, <laughs> talk to the audience about that, Tisha. <laughs> oh, I was like, Who people are really interested in me like that. And Carlos was like, Tisha, listen, you're holding back. You need to get it together. You need to show them you. So I, I am I'm nervous. I'm an introvert. I work behind the scenes. My husband has a big personality, as you can see. My mom has a big personality. And my mom is a Leo. And I was raised with her. So I've always been like the shy type personality. That's just who I am. So when the show, the show first came on, I mean, I wasn't prepared for, you know, reality TV. I, I wasn't like planning out like, this is what we're going to do. This is how it's going to be. It is, it's our reality. You guys got to see me be me, my nervousness and all. So if you guys have also got a chance to see me grow. And that's what I like about it being reality TV. Like I thought I'm one way. Now I'm another way. And I'm still growing. These are just all stages of Leticia Denise Moore Scott. Is that Marceau? Floor. To make herself miserable. So I'm happy we addressed that. Before we get into tonight's episode, I also want to address um, and, and have this um, interview sort of like be Tisha and the T Squad, her fan base, hey T Squad, clearing the air. How do you feel when people say Tisha's stupid, she's naive, she's dumb, she allows this man to control her, blah, 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 blah. Although you obviously are a businesswoman with multiple degrees, mm -hmm. let's, 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 let's shout that out, but people still want to throw these names at you. Does that hurt your feelings to know that's how some people may look at you? Well, what I see is that these people who say those things about me, they have some type of insecurities within themselves when they look in the mirror. So what they're trying to present, trying to say about me, they're actually saying about themselves. So I'm like, that's not me. Y'all don't know me because if you knew me, you wouldn't even call me those names. So it's laughable now because I'm like, these people don't know me. But all the other things they say about me, I'm like, who are you talking about? And she got the same name as me. So, yeah, no, I'm good with that. Um, I just really just had to realize I know who I am. And the ones who say these things hurt people truly try to hurt others. I'm so proud of you because have you ever thanked Melody? Um, if, 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 if we, would you say it's the same in that regard or do you, or do you think it's different? Well, what people don't know is that we actually did. When we got the show, we were like, wow, thank you, Melody Martell, because we never thought about this. But, you know, that was early on in the beginning. So a lot of people don't know how our relationship was in the beginning. Before all of the drama, before everything, it was, you know, I thank you to them. And I was That's like, good. They know too because they didn't come to us and was like, listen, we pitched this show idea about the combat group and we need y'all to be on board. So it's a lot of thank yous that can go around. But yeah, we absolutely did in the beginning. Okay. Well, listen, I think that's all that matters because one thing that I will always say is, and, and maybe it's just me, how I'm built. I never see the issue is saying thank you to somebody who helped you. I, I mean, if we could say thank you to the person holding the door for us to enter a grocery store, if we could say thank you to our mailman for dropping the mail to us instead of the mailbox, I don't. I, I will never understand what's so hard in saying thank you to somebody for providing opportunities. I, I thank everybody all of the time in my life because yes, God has blessed me with this life that I wanted for the, you know, forever. I didn't see it being this. Mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm thankful that it is this because he knew better than me. But I'm also thankful for everybody that comes across my path. I thank you. I thank. I thank the cast. I thank. I thank everybody I work with because at the end of the day, I will say this, and I'll speak for myself. Yes, I'm the king of reality TV, and yes, I've been producing shows for X, Y, and Z. I will always thank my cast and my crew because at the end of the day, my shows aren't successful if my cast don't deliver. Mm -hmm. My shows aren't successful if my producing team and my camera operators, the sound guy, the post team, everybody, we all play a role in the success. And mm -hmm. I think it's weird when it feels like it's the struggle to say a thank you. I, I Again, that's me because I know that God looks at that and says, the more you're grateful for the people who who came into your life, the more I will bless you with. And that's why I say thank you seven, I think, I say thank you seven times followed by hallelujah, because I know that hallelujah is the highest form of praise. And because, you know, a lot of people paved the way for us to be where we're at today. So very thankful and very grateful. And, you know, whenever Marcel and I, we have our moments, and whenever I call you and, you know, I'm like, hey, Carlos, I can't believe this is happening. Like some amazing things has come along being on the TV show. And so we're thankful for that. And, you know, we do. But it's just, people expect for you to say thank you every single time. Like, it's like, no. Oh, yeah, I, no, I disagree with that. I think if you said it once, that's it. Right. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> and I will say this. Tisha has texted me multiple times saying thank you. And and it just hit me. After the episode last season of the Best Summer Trip where your family was on, Tisha texted me and said, thank you so much for putting my family on. 
Yeah. Do you remember that? Purpose only. It's not in the case of anybody. It's just entertainment purpose only. It's not in